Good morning, everyone. Uh, and just good morning. Uh, we are here to uh, worship and celebrate and celebrate baptism and, and all sorts of good things this morning. So I would ask you to rise into our evil for the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, for you to die on the cross, and for its sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us say our gathering hymn, which is, O Christ, our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, 
us and for all who offer here and worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, say, you comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Yes, 
to build the honor and return the meeting in heaven. As the goats who in the present day are rich, command them not to be lost, or to set their hopes on the extremity of riches, but rather not God, who can supervise us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, not strong up in the stuff for the treasure of the good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Word God, word life. Thanks be to God. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with souls, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and live with souls. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In the Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in his life, Lazarus in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are in heaven. Besides all this, we knew in us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might have passed from here to, to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. So the rich man had said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They are Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. Well, I want to thank you, young people we have uh, today. I'm up for a little uh, message. Uh, go ahead and all time in the back row. Good to see you. Apparently, there's something in here today. So, we're going to have a lock box surprise. Does anyone, any of you, come to this box? No? Some big surprise. It's all a mystery. We're going to call it the mystery box today. Um, so, in here is. Well, there's the book. <laughs> Who made the horror? Hold on. And then there's candy. Then we have. Okay, I'm not sure this is for this week. <laughs> it, it's here early, okay? apparently. Um, so we will not do this today. <laughs> this is not for this week. So. Um, we will set that over here. 
That's exactly so silly. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, let's, let's reset. Um, so I want to talk about something. Uh, who here uh, goes to school up here in Vegas? Okay. He's not sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, I know that uh, there is some sadness up at the school this weekend. Um, one of uh, the teachers, uh, counselor, uh, Mrs. Tanson, uh, uh, was uh, uh, died in a car accident. Um, we knew Mr. Tanson. Yeah. Are you sad about losing her? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's sad. I mean, lose people, right? Yeah, it's sad. Uh, and I just want to tell you that it's okay to be sad. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to wonder why something like this might have happened. How did this happen? You know, um, have you all been asking like your, your parents or your adult people in your life, you know, questions like that? And, you know, we all wonder about these things. And I'm not going to try to answer any of that. What I want to tell you all is it's okay to say that. It's okay to cry. It's okay to wonder. It's okay to ask questions of your parents, of your families. Ask me questions, your pastor. Ask me one question that you feel comfortable asking. Whenever you feel comfortable. Sometimes life isn't always fun, right? Yeah. This is one of those times. Not always fun when you lose Okay. Okay? It's true. It's very true. So, that's what I'm going to tell you. Um, it's not just about this dancing. It's about whenever you lose something in your life. Whenever you lose someone. Have you ever lost a pet? Yeah? Yeah? Just right. So, you were sad that that happened to the It's okay to be sad. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask God questions. It's okay to ask God. I don't understand. Why is this happening? Why is this work so much? So the reason it hurts when it leaves you here is because you care about it. The more you care, the more it hurts. And I'm sure this is Nancy here to not be most of So, that's all I'm going to say about that today. Um, let us, uh, let us run to Jesus in prayer. It's something that is all we can do when we're feeling this. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, we don't understand the things that happen. We don't understand what is Help us to simply come to you. Help us to simply come to you. To ask our questions. To ask our questions. To seek answers. To seek answers. And to cry when we're shoulder. To cry when we're Be with us. Be with us. And comfort us. In your name we pray. You're making breakfast. Well, I want you to go back to your seats. We have candy for those that would like some. So grew up off the camp. There's plenty of program.
Well, good morning, everyone. Today's uh, lecture presents us with uh, an important parable. And I was preparing this sermon, and I received the news yesterday evening, or yesterday afternoon, about Mrs. Hans, and I ended up uh, pondering whether or not I should completely rewrite my sermon. And I decided not to, uh, but I want to address what I just hope is before we get into my message on the text for today. That is, uh, for those that are affected by this, uh, this is a lot of rough, rough day. It's been a rough couple of days for our teachers, our colleagues at the school, remember when the new Mrs. Hansen family, and we're going to pray for all of them uh, a little later during the very great procession. But I wanted to just say that what I want the kids is true of everyone that hears this. It's okay to ask questions, to wonder, it's even okay to be God can handle our pain. God can handle our questions. To use a colloquial phrase, God is being told. God and Christ can handle it. You need not fear asking God. Questions. You need not fear being upset and sad. This is a part of life. And today's text addresses this part of life in an unusual way. Today's parable from Jesus. Reminds us of a few things. But first, I want to explain what a parable is and is not. Just as a reminder. Parables are not historical accounts. When Jesus tells a parable, Jesus is not saying this actually happened in history. What Jesus is doing is telling a story. It is meant to spark discussion debate, and force us to ask questions about the world, about God, and ask questions of ourselves. Today's parable is the poor man and the rich man, or the rich man and Lazarus. Uh, this is not the same Lazarus that we read about in the Gospel of John. The Lazarus in the Gospel of John was not a poor homeless person who has sword over. So this is a different person. Remember, this is also a parable. There might be one is known but Lazarus in this context. Jesus is not saying this person actually exists. Though people like Lazarus and people like the rich man exist in this world. So we are told that the rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen, which is a hint of how wealthy this person actually was, because purple is the color of royalty. Fine linen. Very, very suspicious in the ancient world. It says that this rich man feasts sumptuously every day. But just outside the gates of this person's home, and the fact that he had gates is another indication of just how incredibly wealthy this person is. It's just outside the, the gates of his home. There is a poor man waiting to be fed from leftovers from this night he feast. But he never receives even one scrap. 
The rich man has more than enough to spare. And at the very least, he can throw potato peelers. They didn't have to take them. But he can throw them with the scraps. Anything. But he doesn't. The only creatures who can show this man any compassion are the stray dogs. And then we get this imagined conversation after both the poor man and the rich man have died. During which we are told that the poor man finally has some comfort. But the rich man is no longer comfort. He wants Abraham to send the poor man back to earth. The Lord is failing. And Abraham says, this family will not listen, even if someone come back from the dead and explain it all to them. Now, on the surface, it seems like the rich man's request is somewhat reasonable. We actually have a little bit of pity for the rich man. It talks about his agony and he thirsts. And he cares about his family. They don't just want him to end up like him. But when we look at it just a little deeper, we might be able to recognize a couple of things. One, the rich man knows this Lazarus by name, which means he knew and he saw Lazarus every single day sitting outside of his house, waiting for food. The rich man should be nothing to help. And now that the rich man is dead, he wants Lazarus, the one who is neglected and abused in life, to go and work for him in the afterlife. Even in the afterlife, the rich man barely recognizes the value of Lazarus as a human being. He only recognizes Lazarus' value for what value he has in the original. Human beings, sadly, can see the misery and suffering in this world literally outside of their front doors and do nothing. And the warning of this parable it is to remind us to not be like the rich man in this story. To not ignore the suffering because it's right outside our front door. <laughs> to not see those people as less than. To not see those people like Lazarus. This poor man with swords all over his body. But only the dogs can come to him show this man any compassion. Don't be like that man. And then Jesus is also telling us, don't be like that man. And furthermore, don't see people for what they can do for you. The only time this rich man in this story recognizes Lazarus at all is when he needs something from him. Don't simply begin to care about someone when they just magically do something. The rich man in this story does not act. But we, as followers of Christ, are called to We are called to use what we have to help those who sit outside of our proverbial gates. That is true within our personal lives, our family lives, our communal and church life, our local level, and the church around the world as an institution. The institution throughout centuries has been called to share the sumptuous feast of God's grace poured out upon us 
in baptism and holy communion. We are called to give it freely to those who sit and wait for it. We get the church as an institution throughout history has all too often been like the rich man. Sick on this wealth of grace and baptism and holy communion and God's forgiveness and ignore people outside of the walls of the institutional church. It is all too easy for human beings to not see what is right in front of them. We often choose to not see the poor of it. Whether that be poor in finances or poor in spiritual needs. We choose to ignore those outside of the institution of the church and only see them as future potential worker bees. Well, we want as a church people to join the church. That way we can have more people work for us. And exactly the warning Jesus gives you in this parable. Now, even though human beings mess things up, even though human beings often don't see the value of those just outside our gates, we are lucky. It's not luck. We are less than not. That God sees value in everything and everyone. God sees value in people for who they are. It may be second nature for us to ignore the needs of the world, but God chose to address the needs of the world in the person of Jesus Christ. The Christ who broke through into this world. Not to rescue us from the world, but to equip us to be better caretakers and stewards of the world. For it is in Christ that we have our life, our being. It is in Christ that we have forgiveness of sin. It is in Christ. It is in Christ. So we have hope. Even when things look hopeless. Even when we look around and see division in the world and our communities. When we look around and see families split apart. When we look around and see one group of people taking advantage of those who are less fortunate, we nevertheless still have hope. Not just hope for the afterlife. This story is not about the afterlife. It is not a blueprint to explain to us what happens when we die. This story is a blueprint on how to live here and now. And this story tells us to look after one another, to care for one another, to help one another, to be there when tragedy strikes. To lend the shoulder to cry and hear to listen. Christ does not talk about division in this story. Christ teaches us to care, how to care, and to be aware that we as human beings 
have an inclination to care about ourselves for all of us. Massive. We believe we are transformed. We believe that God makes us new. God creates us to be who we are, but to live a life of discipleship. <laughs> love God. Love our neighbor as ourselves. So that when we see the poor man Lazarus outside of our gates, in need, we don't think of just sharing our table scraps. We think of inviting him in to share the feast. Not just the feast at our physical tables, the feast that holds him. Feast of grace that we all experience, that we all encounter in worship. The feast of Christ is for all, and we invite all. We welcome all, not just in the well. We welcome all because that sounds nice. Because we really, truly need this. Because we know that we were once in the black as well. God has transformed us, made us new creations. God transformed all. Not made with a different person, not made with a different you. But God, I admit to you, the you that God has called you to be with all the gifts that you currently have, with everything that you currently offer. God loves you and calls you just as you are. We love you. And us all. It's a feast. The kingdom of God. Which is not just up there, but it's here, right? Jesus is on. So to say our hymn of the day which is uh, hymn 843 if you ever hear it.
uh, family to come up as we prepare to celebrate the baptism of the Father's Son. Page two through seven in your appearance, if you would like to follow the book. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope to the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission the life of the Lord. Sponsors. There will be a lot of here to ask you to present son for baptism. Jesse and Lisa, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, you desire to have son baptized into Christ. As you bring something to receive the gift of baptism, you and you all are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, to pray and to stand commandments, to place in his hand from the scriptures and nurture faith and prayer, so that some may learn to trust in God. Proclaim Christ with word and deed. Care for others in the world that God has made. To work for justice and peace. To you, all, promise to help Sutton grow in Christian faith and love. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Sutton in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? To help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. People of God, do you promise to nurture Sutton? Uh, do you promise to support Sutton and pray for him in his new life in Christ? <laughs> Parents, sponsors, and to congregation. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ. Jesus reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all forces and defy God? I renounce the sin. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? I renounce Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? I renounce Do you believe in God and Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? 
I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffering under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to the judge for the living and the dead. Do you believe in God and the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks to God our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning may your spirit move over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling for life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered no way to his family, and through the sea, you led them to Israel, from slavery into freedom. As a river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus, death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to new life. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may, give, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The servant of God is baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your sons and daughters new birth. Cleanse them all from sin, raise them to eternal life. Sustain something with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the Spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Son, child of God, you are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mark the cross of Christ, glory. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of the light. Let us welcome the newly baptized son in the family of God. Thanks and praise God. And Mary God has created the meaning words of all the world. All those who have been baptized into Christ and put on Christ forevermore. Hallelujah. Let us pray for the church. All God's creation and all those in O God, in rich and mercy, fill your church with righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Empower the baptized by your spirit to be rich in good works and ready to share your grace. 
the Lord in your person. O God of creation, protect the earth and all its creatures. So cute. Oh. <laughs> It's so cute. <laughs> Protect the earth and its creatures. Provide water, food, shelter, and favorable habitats, especially for endangered species. Lord, in your mercy. Increase justice in the world. Guide leaders across this planet and around the globe. That all that for those who hold public office, especially to act with compassion and discernment. Lord, in your mercy. Oh well, God, you give food to the hungry. You set the captives free. You lift up those who are bowed down. Watch over the strength, O oh God. Deal to those who are ill. We especially pray for my family's longtime friend, Sue Whitman, during this time of Thank you. Give her grace, give her family and strength, and all that she loves. Stir us to act in the best interest of our neighbors, not the seat and stranger right outside our door in your mercy. Enlighten our praise, O oh God. Inspire musicians, artists, poets, I do not represent all who create beauty in this place. Lord, in your person. Yeah. If all the saints who have died in the arms of your loving gift, we especially remember of this day, Brian Hansen. Keep her family close to you in your care. We also remember on this day, Juanita's fall. Be with her family during this time of loss and mourning. And grant a holy angel may one day bring us all into eternal life with all the saints to the light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, gather together in sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, O gracious God. We offer these and all our prayers to you for Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us gather the
Blessed are you, O God, and maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in the way of gathered, defeating the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Begin with your gifts with us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world that is in me. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call upon you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for a We have uh, a great few announcements uh, this morning. Uh, once again, uh, uh, we, uh, our condolences go to the Cassie family, to all of our students, to her husband, to her child, to all of those who love to get her out. And uh, congratulations to uh, Jesse and Lisa on the back of Sutton. Congratulations. Uh, Conversation class begins on October 5th at 6.30 p.m. right here at the church. Uh, the first session will be a meet and greet. Uh, parents and kids, parents and uh, guardians and or mentors are uh, expected to attend the Mississippi and the introductory uh, session. Uh, so mark down that. Uh, and then Sunday, October 9th, uh, following church, there will be an Acolyte Ministry Training Day. It'll probably be, no, I know it'll be no more than 30 minutes of this. So many of the Acolytes really already are pretty well for the chief. So, um, so make sure that uh, all Acolytes, the confirmation students are required to attend. And uh, anyone else that wants to be an Acolyte, regardless of age, you're local to it. So. Uh, uh, October 23rd is Confirmation Sunday. Uh, this coming day, when students who have completed confirmation already will affirm their baptism and faith. Uh, let's see, let's see if they have a couple more. Uh, oh, uh, before we. Uh, so, we have two more announcements. First, uh, uh, if you are a visitor here, uh, welcome. Thank you very much uh, for attending. Uh, if you have coffee and snacks after you are more than welcome to, to come to that. Uh, and um, I, 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 there's three more questions. <laughs> the second is our new video system has arrived. We will have a new video system uh, running uh, next year. Uh, I'm not exactly sure we will get up and running, but it won't be too long. So uh, uh, Paul and I just have to learn it and see how it works. Uh, it's very simple. So uh, begin to think about it if you're interested at all in becoming a member of the uh, video team. We're going to come up with a better name. The video team, the video ministry, um, to uh, begin to think about that. The new system is simple to run. It can, once you get it set up, it'll be very simple. You can run it off your phone, it's going to have multiple cameras, you can change angles, it's going to be really cool. So, if you're interested in that, uh, pretty much anybody can run it now. But, but it'll just take us some time to get it all wired. Uh, last announcement uh, is from Stephanie. So, please uh, 
Uh, oh, okay, bounce and leave. <laughs> We had two Bibles that we have to present um, these Sunday to observe the lights in the play on the bubble and then we'll be on the back and then we'll be on the rest of the Was there a funeral announcement for what he saw? There is not been an announcement. Uh, it's going to be in the for at least a couple of weeks. So that, that was, uh, it's not happening. It's, so what we use it for day, it's not in select. Uh, let's see. Uh, that is all the announcements that I have. The rise is for equal for our final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you all with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you all peace. Uh, um, we will sing our, our final hymn of the day, which is in your hymn of the Lord, 635. We walk by Peace, the love to serve the Lord. And